We've got an unusual cyber crime story. Ukrainian hackers are accused of stealing hundreds of thousands of press releases from newswire services and then using the secret information to commit insider trading, raking in a combined $100 million in profits. Well, this afternoon, the FBI announced charges against the nine people who carried out the cyber attack. Today, the hackers, traders, traders and middlemen are charged with using sophisticated hacking techniques to acquire non-public information. They exploited this information to trade in at least a thousand inside the window trades over the course of three years. Those of us who invest in the stocks and commodities markets know all too well the devastating consequences of these deceptive practices. In this case, the defendants ultimately benefited from more than $30 million in illegal profits. Today's indictment sheds light on an increasingly complex threat to both our country and the financial sector. All right, Justice reporter Paula Reed joins us now with more on this. This is really interesting and, and pretty crafty. Paula, how exactly did the hackers, uh, how were they able to pull this whole thing off? Simple supply and demand. There were rogue traders who wanted access to information that wasn't public so they could trade on it and make a profit. And they were able to find hackers who were willing to go into these companies that write press releases, steal their information that had not been yet made public, and then share it with those traders who could essentially commit insider trading. But they got caught because they had a very narrow window of time between the time the press release was written and when it would be released. So authorities noticed a flurry of activity before the these press releases were sent out, which tipped them to the scheme. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Typically, these press releases are prepared just the day before, so you'd have to pick up a pattern after a while. Um, but, you know, uh, corporate espionage and the hacking of businesses, we've, we've seen it before. The Sony hack, I think, was the biggest one we've covered so far. How unique is something like this? This is very unique, and it's always concerning when you see creativity and criminality combined. But it is not uncommon to see uh, hackers trying to steal money, especially when it comes to Eastern Europe. Traditionally, hackers who come from Eastern Europe and Russia are trying to steal money, whereas hackers who come from China generally are interested in intellectual property. So it's not unusual to see hackers trying to steal money. But working in concert with traders here in the U.S., it's pretty unique. And federal prosecutors say this is the largest scheme of its kind. Mm -hmm. From your perspective because you've covered several of these types of hackings. Is this a new frontier of cyber hacking? It's possible. Uh, there's all these different you know, forms of cyber hacking. I think it serves as a reminder, though, these press release companies probably never imagined that they would be a target for hacking. But as one source always tells me, there's two kinds of companies, those who know they've been hacked and those who just don't know yet that they have been hacked. So it's a reminder that all companies are vulnerable and they have to make sure that they have defenses to protect against this kind of theft. Wow, indeed. Paula Reed, thank you very much.